Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm going to show you how to do deep queries in Firebase and why you should never delete documents in Firebase that have subcollections. If you want to jump ahead, here are the timestamps. First, we're going to make a Firestore database, a document within document. Then we'll create a very simple Angular app so we're all on the same page. We'll do the actual deep query inside Firestore. And I'll show you something better than document deletion. I'll show you how to do soft deletions. Okay, first thing to do is go to firebase.google.com and click go to console. And as I start out, I want to thank my subscriber, Hey Matthew, for the idea on a deep query project with Firebase and Angular. I'm going to add a project. I'll call it deep query and continue. We don't need Google Analytics. I'll create the project. Continue. We'll go to Firestore database, create database, start in test mode. Next. I'll choose a location close to me. Enable. Now I'm going to create a collection of users and every user will have a sub collection of addresses. So physical addresses, mailing addresses, things like that. So start collection, users, and I'll create a document for myself and I'll have a name, make a map, first name, last name. So now we'll go into the document and we'll start a collection inside and I'll call it addresses and next I'll create a document called mailing addresses and inside that we'll have primary. 123 Primary Street, and we'll have an array of other addresses. And save. So now we have a sub collection, and we can go over to our Angular app and start querying for this. Now, the last thing to do on Firebase, I'm going to go over to Settings, Project Settings, and I'm going to choose a web app. I'll call it Deep Query, Register App. And now, as we start the Angular project, I'm going to grab the Firebase config and I'll just toss that into a text editor. We'll come back to that. Now, I want to make sure I'm in the newest version of Angular. So, npm i g install global at angular slash cli. And we'll make our app ng new. I'll call it deep query. And then I want to turn type checking off. So, dash dash strict space false. Would you like routing? Yes. And CSS. Okay, we'll jump into the folder. And we'll add Angular Fire. So ng add at Angular slash Fire. This step often fails. If it does, just run the step over again. It failed here. I'll just press up and enter. Now I'll choose the deep query project we just created, and we're ready. I'll add one more thing. I always like to add Angular material to my projects. So ng add at Angular slash Material. Any theme, typography, yes. Browser animation, sure. I just want to make one component. So ng generate component, nggc. And I'll call it home. Now I'll make a new tab and I'll start the Angular serve. ng serve dash dash port 4202 dash dash open. Let's connect the two apps and then we can do our deep query. Okay, let's open up Visual Studio Code. We'll go to source app app routing module. I'll import my home component. I'll add home to the routes. Now I'll go to source environments environment.ts. I'll take the Firebase configuration and I'll drop that into the environment file. I'll change this from Firebase config to just Firebase colon, delete the semicolon. Now I'll go to source app, app module TS. I'll add in all of my Angular material and at the bottom you can see the environment file and Angular fire. Then in imports, I'll just add all the libraries and we're done there. Now I'll go to source app app component.html and I'll delete everything except for the last line. So we'll leave router out. Okay, and now it goes straight to home. So we'll go over to source app home and we'll open the TS file and the HTML file. And now it's time to do the deep query. So I'll start on the TS file. And what I want to do is make sure that I can do a shallow query. So in Firebase, no matter how many levels or how many documents inside documents you have, your query only runs on that exact level. I'm going to start at the highest level of user. So I'll import Angular Firestore and Angular Firestore document and also observables. I'll create a variable and observable for the user level, the top level of our document structure. I'll add Angular Firestore to the constructor and then on init, I'll run our query. So firestore.collectionusers.doc and the document will be the Ryan at test.com doc. Now we'll go over to the HTML and we'll have something very simple. If we have the user, so user pipe async, then we'll just print out the name. It's user pipe async dot name dot first and user pipe async dot name dot last. And here we can see name is Ryan L. Okay, now it's time for a deep query. We'll go back to the TS file and we'll create a variable called addresses. 
Now, just like we did our shallow query on user, we're going to do the deep query on addresses. And there's two ways to do this. We'll set up the observable for addresses just the same way we did for user. We're going to tell it firestore.collection and top level, users, then .doc, Ryan at test.com, then the level below, collection addresses, and then the document within, .doc, mailing addresses. Looking back on Firestore, if we go to users, we have Ryan at test, then we have addresses as a subcollection, mailing addresses as a document, and we should be able to get the primary and other addresses here. So we'll go to the HTML and we'll add in primary address is our addresses variable, if it exists, dot primary address. And over on the deep query, there we have it. And now to add in the array of other addresses. And there we go, one, two, three other streets and four, five, six other streets. Now that's one of the two ways to do the query. And I don't really like this way, but you can see you always go collection doc, collection doc. Here's the easier way. So this way we're gonna say addresses is gonna be the observable on firestore.doc, and then we're passing in the deep path. The user collection, the Ryan at test.com document, the addresses collection, and then the mailing addresses document. So I'll comment out the first line there. And there we go, we have it again. Now one more bit of code for you as you're doing your debugging. I'm gonna to subscribe to this so anytime that the document changes on the deep level, I wanna be able to console log it. So addresses.subscribe, and then my result goes to console log addresses print the result. I'll look at the console, and I'll come back over to Firebase, and I'll change one of my addresses and update. Now back here, we've already printed it out and I can see the entire object that I'm working with. So this brings us to the last bit, how we delete them and why we shouldn't. Now it's time for me to delete a document. In Firebase, if you delete the shallow part of a deep document, you haven't deleted the whole thing. You've only deleted the level that you point to. And I'll show you by adding a delete button here. So I'll have a function called delete and I just want to delete the document. In the TypeScript file, I have a delete function and then I'll go to Firestore Collection Users doc Ryan at test.com and I'll delete it. And when this happens, the console log will tell me it's deleted, but this didn't actually happen. I'll delete the document, top level doc deleted, and I can keep saying delete and delete and delete. And it keeps telling me it's deleted, but it's not. When we come back over to Firebase, I'll refresh, and the whole document is there. We can see the deep level, my addresses are still there. When we go to the very top, we see it's a ghost. The top level, with my information is gone, but the sub collection is still there. So we don't want to delete in Firebase. It's actually at the time of making this video, not even possible. You, you can do this jumping through a lot of hoops, but there's a good reason not to delete and that's soft deletions. You might be thinking that, well, first, you're going to have a lot of data online. You're going to be paying for it. Um, but when you go over to Firebase's pricing model, every gig costs 18 cents. So how much data can you put into a gig? I did the math myself. This is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And for this 309 page book, it takes 2,287 copies of this book to make one gig of data, 18 cents worth. So it is well worthwhile to just keep a record around and do a soft delete. Because when you do the deletion, it actually doesn't fully delete. And it takes a ton of code to delete it properly. So let's look at a soft deletion. I'm gonna go back to the Ryan document and I'll add some values there. I'll add one more value, a soft deletion value. And this field's gonna be called is deleted. It's a Boolean and false. We'll add that. And then in the HTML file, all you have to do is check if you have this field as true and then you can print your object or not. So soft deleted, user async dot is deleted. I'll go back to our project. It's not deleted. I'll change it to true and it is deleted. And when it is deleted, we just don't show the record. I hope this was really helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much.